Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 12th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And this week I am actually teaching the SEC 522 Defending Web Application class in Washington, D.C. At least, uh, well, uh, that's sort of the virtual location of our Cloud Defender event this week. Rob today completed his three-part series about how to use the NIST National Vulnerability Database with automated PowerShell tools in order to augment and assist with your vulnerability management program. Interesting PowerShell script that he came up with in the end, and it is available on GitHub. And Microsoft released a new version of the SysInternals tool with two significant updates to Sysmon and Process Monitor. Sysmon added additional events that will alert you if a mapped image file in memory doesn't match the on-disk image file. Also, if the image is locked for exclusive access, which uh, is of course a common sign that process hollowing does take place. That's where an attacker essentially modifies an image of a process in memory in order to inject a malicious code. And process monitor will now also monitor the rec safe key, rec load key and rec restore key APIs. In particular, the Sysmon update sounds really interesting and would be interesting uh, to hear from you uh, if that works for you, if you detected anything, if there are any false positive issues with this new feature. Based on that I in the past have gotten quite a few requests for how to install our honeypot behind Ubiquiti perimeter uh, device, I'm assuming that uh, quite a few of you are using Ubiquiti equipment, in particular uh, the Unify line of access points. And turns out that Ubiquiti did suffer a breach and it's not yet clear what extent of uh, customer data was compromised in that breach. This is, of course, particularly important because Ubiquiti does control access, uh, at least to some features of its equipment via its cloud infrastructure, and that infrastructure appears to have been affected since Ubiquiti does recommend changing passwords and enabling two-factor authentication. Now, two-factor authentication should already have been a must, so I hope you had that implemented, but I would also suggest that in addition to updating and changing your passwords with Ubiquiti, you also at least for a while disable cloud access to your Ubiquiti controllers if you can afford to do this, which of course uh, may break, for example, some of the access via the Ubiquiti Unify apps uh, since uh, they somewhat at least uh, rely on the cloud component. And I'm linking uh, to a Pleeping Computer article here about this issue because they have a little bit more background also in particular regarding this cloud access, which has been uh, sort of an issue with uh, Ubiquiti and the Unify line of products in the past uh, that essentially you sort of need to sign up uh, with a cloud account in order to use their equipment, even though you're pretty much hosting all of the controllers uh, on premise. And Sentinel Labs has an interesting reverse analysis of a recent Mac OS malware. Now, this malware in its end effect is not really all that exciting. It has been around for a while. It is a crypto coin miner, but it has really resisted reversing. And that, of course, is kind of unusual that, yes, you know, Reversing isn't always easy, uh, but uh, typically some fairly straightforward, you would think, malware uh, like a crypto coin miner shouldn't really be all that difficult. Well, in part, the problem was the use of run-only Apple scripts. So Apple scripts, that's uh, Apple's uh, unique uh, scripting language. By default, it will save the source code and a compiled version of the script in a file. And then, of course, reversing as well 
well, straightforward. You still have the source code, but there is a run only option that will only serve, save the compiled version. And turns out that this code is amazingly difficult actually to then decompile and reverse. So Sentinel Labs actually ended up creating in part its own tools that they also then uh, open sourced. If you do run into an Apple script and you do have uh, to reverse it, well, uh, take a look at AEBT Decompile, which is the name of the tool that Sentinel Labs created. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. And well, if you ever do want to take a class with me, uh, take a look at the show notes. At the bottom of the show notes, you should always see a list of uh, future classes that I'll be teaching. I think I usually have the next uh, two classes listed there. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.